Hello, Ovesen.net here. I am building something today. Uh, I have laid out the components here and I'm building two of those. are the components needed to build a 512 uh, kilobyte uh, memory expansion for the Amiga 500. I bought this on eBay from a Norwegian seller called uh, Kirsti73 and uh, they were really cheap and uh, seems like a simple build, only four parts. So this is the uh, PCB and it can be uh, fitted with up to three memory modules. Uh, however, for the Amiga 500 you can only have one. And this is the connector and this is the memory module and uh, this is a capacitor. Now the first problem here is that the pin header that came with the PCB is uh, too wide and I have to cut off uh, from this point here. So I'm just marking the, the last pin that is not in use so that I can find a tool to cut it. Uh, this is hard plastic and it can easily break if you if you use a knife or something. No, I don't have a Dremel or uh, anything like that, but I have this uh, hand saw. So I'm using this one. Okay, I sawed through uh, most of the pin header and uh, I'll just break it off like this. Then I just file it off a bit to make a smooth edge. So I got uh, one of my Amigas out and uh, the memory module is this one which sits underneath the Amiga 500 in this uh, trapdoor. So this is an original uh, uh, Amiga memory which is called the A501. So uh, this is the connector and I'm just gonna test it to see if it fits before I start soldering. It's a bit tight but uh, yeah, it fits. Now this kit uh, comes with a challenge and the challenge is that it is a surface mounted uh, memory chip and I never did any surface mount soldering before so it'd be interesting to see if I can manage to do that. Also uh, it didn't come with a necessary 100 nanofarad capacitor but I found this one 0.1 microfarad uh, which I think will be the same so I hope that uh, will work out. According to the instructions on the seller's blog it's uh, supposed to be connected like this and the memory chip should go on the U1 here. So I start with uh, soldering the pin header uh, with is a regular true hole soldering so that should be easy. Okay so getting 56 pins to fit inside 56 holes uh, was not that easy but I uh, <laughs> finally get it through so with some bending. I start by applying some flux, uh, liquid uh, flux or Lötwasser as it says on the bottle. And this makes the soldering tin flow more easily. I 
I start by soldering the opposite edges first. This uh, looks uh, good. Um, I'm getting better at soldering. Uh, I'm not an expert, but uh, uh, with practice you uh, learn. Next up is the capacitor. I uh, should, of course, have a surface mounted uh, capacitor which uh, goes here, but I'll try with this one. So I just had to cut the legs and try to, f to solder it to the soldering pads there. So I bent the legs uh, on the capacitor to be able to touch the surface of the soldering pad there. Now I'm trying to solder it. that easy and when you are a little bit shaky also final challenge is the memory chip uh, itself which is a surface mounted uh, uh, module and uh, it's not uh, easy to solder this one with a regular soldering iron. So I got this uh, soldering paste uh, from China and also uh, I have a heat gun uh, which I also bought on eBay from China for around uh, 30 euros. So it's pretty cheap but uh, it works. So I am applying a good amount of um, soldering paste to the solder pads here but um, uh, this looks like a mess and I have to clean it up uh, after applying it. The solder paste was not as uh, sticky as I hoped it would be so. Okay now I have got a um, little amount of uh, soldering paste here and um, my hope is that uh, when I use the heat gun that uh, the soldering paste will melt and retract to the soldering pads. So I'm not uh, at all convinced that uh, this uh, will work, but uh, I give it a shot and you have to find uh, pin one, uh, which has a mark here, so yeah. I just place the memory chip down to the soldering pad. Okay, I'm heating up the heat gun. I think this was a good buy from China. It's uh, you can regulate the, the speed of the air and you can regulate the temperature. So I mean, for uh, 30 euros, <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, it's not high tech, but it works. Uh, I'm just gonna adjust it to around 350 degrees. All right, uh, let's give it a go then.
right, I think that went uh, well. Uh, the soldering paste melted and uh, hopefully every solder point is uh, good. So there you have it, uh, two memory expansion cards and uh, I'm not at all sure if they're gonna work but uh, now it's time to test. So testing now, um, first without the memory expansion, just to see how much memory is available. So without the memory expansion, the workbench uh, starts up and it has 363 kilobytes free memory. So let me add the memory expansion. It should fit quite nicely. Yeah. So the machine boots, so uh, hopefully this will work. It says that the battery backed up clock is not found and uh, that is true because uh, I didn't install uh, the battery backup clock on this memory expansion and uh, that's uh, something I can add later on. Okay, kind of uh, disappointment here because none of the memory cards uh, works. So clearly I did something wrong. Just had to figure out what that is. Okay, so I found a couple of uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors in ceramic type. Uh, however, it did not uh, make this work. So I think there is something uh, wrong with the uh, soldering, maybe some of the pads are not uh, uh, sufficiently soldered to uh, the chip, uh, so I think I'll try another technique now. Okay, when I inspect the pads closely, I can see that uh, it might uh, not be a good soldering job before, so I'm thinking about uh, uh, doing some manual soldering now. So I cleaned up the solder from the previous attempt and now I'm trying to, to solder this on the regular way. So I think I'm gonna start by uh, soldering the corners first and uh, I apply some uh, flux first. That was the corners and uh, now I apply a lot of uh, flux through the rest of the pins. So this is uh, very small for my eyes. Um, so I use this magnifying glass which is uh, pretty poor quality but uh, it helps uh, somewhat. So now the real challenging task to solder the rest of the pins. So I 
think I used a little too much uh, soldering here because some of the pins are soldered together and I have to clean up that mess. Well, I had to start over again and uh, because I couldn't remove the uh, soldering tin between the legs of the chip, so uh, yeah. And then I tried to desolder it and I used a little too much force and I ripped off some of the soldering pads from the PCB, so um, this one is a uh, no-go. So instead I'm using uh, the other PCB which I uh, did uh, fit the chip with the hot air gun and um, instead of removing it first I now try to solder each pin individually uh, manually. Damn. They stuck together. Well, I have to fix that afterwards. I think this requires a good deal of practice to to master, and uh, I think I'm getting better at it, but it's still hard. So it might be a bit hard to see through the magnifying glass, but uh, I think all the pins uh, look okay. They are all uh, connected to their pad, both sides. Uh, none of them are stuck together, so uh, I think I'll go for this one and try. So, crossing my fingers now that this one works. Okay, it says battery backed up clock not found, which is correct. All right, it says 887 kilobytes free. The thing did work after all and uh, yeah, that was really good. So this was kind of a, a challenging uh, task. Uh, soldering SMD component is not my strong side, but I uh, learn. Uh, this was the first one and uh, I think it was a success. All right, one out of two is not bad, I think. So uh, with this, I say thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and enjoyed my video and please subscribe.